All right. Welcome once again to the Beatzilla PDX official show. This is a news break. And uh, what we are talking about right here is Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle rips transgender activists who use violence to protest him. Well, imagine that. And, you know, I, I also was wondering about that when that actually happened. And then, no, if you all remember when he got attacked on stage, how fast that community was saying that that dude was not part of them. If you all remember when they uh, had to uh, administer some um, some protection for the brother Dave Chappelle, I believe brother Jamie Foxx was there and uh, some other artists were there to um, promptly administer defense for our brother. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, he's calling out their hypocrisy and good, good. So this goes on to say Dave Chappelle has ripped the apparent hypocrisy of trans rights protesters using the very violence they accuse his comedy of inciting. In a live special for his podcast, quote, The Midnight Miracle, Unquote. The 49 year old funny man recalled the protests outside his July shows in Minnesota, following calls to cancel him for jokes about the transgender community. Uh huh. Quote, these were grown people of various genders and gender identities, unquote, who, quote, threw eggs at the people lined up to see the show, unquote. And another quote is, one lady who was so madame, she picked up a police barricade <laughs> to use against the fans while willing to see him at the Varsity Theater in Minneapolis, he told his audience. This bee picked up that barricade up by herself and threw it at the crowd. He recalled gripping, I gotta tell y'all. It's amazing. It, it's an amazing feat of strength for a woman. <laughs> In the podcast, co-hosted with Brooklyn's rapper, uh, Brooklyn rappers Talib Kweli and Yasin uh, Bey, which of course y'all know as uh, Most Deaf or formerly known as Most Deaf, Chappelle noted the irony of protesters resorting to such behavior given their accusations against him in his ongoing material about them. And which it truly, really, and, and, and real quick, it wasn't really about them. They centered themselves about it to get away from the fact that the scenario to which he presented was talking about a societal nature of anti-blackness. But they quickly took it upon themselves to make it about themselves and center it and how wrong all of them have been. One thing of, uh, or one of the things that these people, the trans and their surrogates, always say is that my jokes are somehow going to be the root cause of some impending violence. Yeah, which is a bunch of load of crap. But I got to tell you, as abrasive as the, quote, activists were, the way they were protesting, throwing eggs at people, throwing barricades, cussing and screaming, nobody beat them up, he said, joking. That's even the crowd at the Luther Vandross concert would F, and, would F these ends up. <laughs> he dismissed the suggestion that a push to cancel him was driven by, quote, love. And it's not. It's anti-black hate. Masked in a rainbow. But no, it's anti-black hate. Just like the people who tried to pull that little trick uh, on our sister Aretha Franklin, rest in peace and rest in power, sister. Uh, but yes, these are the, the same types. So let's let's be clear. They want to be feared. If you say this, then we will punish you. We will come to F your show up, he said. And they just don't they just don't get to do that to me. Chappelle said that one of the second nights of protest, he made a point to try and speak to them, admitting it was a huge effing mistake. Of course it was. Of, of uh, the 15 protesters or so, only about three of them looked lucid, while the other 12 were just sticking to the playbook. We're here to stir S up. So stir crap up, he said. 
I feel like they wanted me to say something inflammatory in a weird way. I think some of them had the intention of inciting violence against themselves for publicity, he said. When mean activists screamed at him for addressing them as ma'am without knowing how they identify, Chappelle said he replied, well, whatever you identify as, you're a white one. <laughs> and that's that's my point exactly. These people, woo wee, see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That part. That part. See, when they really tried it, when they tried to see you, see you, y'all over there in that, that Skittles bag, y'all trying to cause y'all hate black women so much that y'all, you know, never take the advice from a black woman because a black woman could have just simply told y'all this. But instead, we're going to go push the envelope on him. And why ain't everybody going with our thought? Because we see you for what it is. Yeah, whatever what you identify as. You a white one. Let these people come over here and tell, tell you that their uh, sexual preference or gender or identity is comparable to the, the plight of foundational black Americans and freedmen, the, the descendants of chattel slavery, uh, descendants of uh, American slavery, the black ones, of course, whose lineage goes back to the killing fields of this place and even dates and predates the existence of this country and also some who predate the slave ships even coming here. So we have to understand when we see people doing this, they have an agenda, and I've long said that that trans agenda was anti-black. I have long been telling y'all this. I've been saying it. People have called me transphobic, hom homophobic for years, and now all of this is starting to come out. But then again, I told you I knew exactly who some of these people were behind it, and they're very anti-black. They've been that. So um, let's see. It said, And she never objected to that. Right. See, here's the point. She never objected to it because that was the main point. Regardless of whatever she's talking about, attacking a black man is the objective. So this is the powers that be using a vehicle who you believe will garner the same sympathy and sensitivity as black folks who are the descendants of slaves should be getting in America. But that's not happening. Um, and so they're coming, trying to attack one of those descendants of the American slaves. That is backwards. And so they, I don't know why they can't get this under their heads, but or in the into their minds. But look, listen to what he went to go say. He said, suggested they were a bunch of white people trying to tell a black person to shut up. While the anger did not stop Chappelle from taking the stage, it did see him booted from performing at his first choice of venues in Minneapolis the First Avenue Club, famed for Prince's Purple Rain movie. Shame on y'all, First Avenue. Despite being booked after his Netflix comedy special already sparked controversy with his trans jokes, Chappelle said his gigs at the best rock club in the country were canceled at the very last minute as part of an apparent pledge to be a safe space. I wasn't mad that they canceled the show. I was mad at the statement they released. He said, if the club is telling staff artists in our community, we hear you and we are sorry. You're sorry for booking me? He asked. However, Chappelle insisted that the club owner whom he called a married lesbian who, <laughs> who was, quote, of that community, unquote, told him that, quote, the reason she canceled that show was fear, unquote. Why would it be fear? This is your community. See, ooh, whoop, 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. How would you have fear? Are you saying that this, you, you are worried about rainbow on rainbow or Skittles on Skittles, uh, Academy on Academy violence? Shout out Tori and Rain Reloaded. Is this what you're saying? 
Because to say you canceled him based out of fear, but then you told these other people that it would be a safe space. Is that to say that there is no safe space in the place that Prince made famous a heterosexual male, a heterosexual black male? Who is not mixed, by the way, for those of you who have watched the movie, I don't know why they did that. But no, Prince was not mixed, nor his brothers or sisters or sisters. Um, now. Again, also the time. Let's not forget them. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. And then later on, uh, Mick Condition. But now I guess, you know, things change hands and businesses change over and new ownership comes in. And I guess this is what the play is now out there at the First Avenue. However, just, man, it's kind of interesting that this is the lane that they would take. Now it says, quote, that Minneapolis <clears throat> has been under siege since George Floyd was uh, deleted and that all types of threats they will make and she was not accustomed to. What did the First Avenue nightclub have to do with George Floyd? There, there have been more women protests since the summer of 2020. But, and, and there's been vandalism, violence, at all of these events that don't have anything to do with us. But it's very interesting. That's, yeah, can't, can't help but don't miss that, family. It goes on to read, in his shows, Chappelle has declared that gender is a fact and defends uh, defended Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling saying that he is also a proud member of Team Turf, meaning trans exclusionary radical feminist. Well, yes, I, I can agree because see, understand what what you're talking about. He's a proud member of Team Turf. I would have to agree. Trans exclusionary radical feminist. Now, I'm not, well, no, and I, I can't say, no, I'm not a proud member of that. I would say I am, uh, I, I would not deal with any of that, but I would have to say I would be very much uh, along the lines and in league with excluding these uh, feminists, because when you start moving into feminists and feminism, that is just another branch of white supremacy. So when you have this trans exclusionary radical feminist, I can kind of see the the that, especially on the white women's side of the game, black folks really not so much. Um, however, when we're talking exclusionary, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm exclusionary. I'm exclusionary to the feminism uh, aspect of it, and that that this particular community uses as tactics or bullying pulpits, shaming tactics to use against heterosexual individuals. Um, because if you don't want anyone to be excluded, then you cannot exclude heterosexuality. Because now you have no longer uh, kept it inclusionary or neutral. So now that becomes an unsafe space for one particular group. In this instance, the person to whom you already booked, not sure hope he got his deposit because that's why you get paid half up front just in case things like this happen. So when they book, you get your money. Just word of advice out there. Just go, oh, we don't want this show to go on. Just make sure you get paid first. On receipt before you hit the stage. So, I mean, he could have been already paid in full, to be quite honest. After the Netflix walkouts, employee complaints and social outcry, he was attacked on stage by an armed audience member, Isaiah Lee, during a show in Holly at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, addressing all of his critics, Chappelle said, I am not even mad that they take issue with my work. Good, fine. What I take issue with is the idea that because they don't like it, I'm not allowed to say it, he said on his podcast. Art is a nuanced endeavor. I have... I have a belief that they are trying to take that nuance out of speech and American culture. Definitely. They're making people speak as if 
They either own the right or the left. Everything seems absolute, whereas any opinion I respect is way more nuanced than these binary choices that they keep putting in front of us. I don't see the the world in red or blue, and I think art is the perfect place to talk it out, he said. In fact, it may just be the last place. And I can totally agree with him. Um, So with that being said, that's the end of this article. But there is a little video that I wanted to play real quick that came along with it. So um, let me play that now. So I get to the show that night and, of course, protesters came. Uh, What a scene. Mayor, you wouldn't believe it. These were grown people of of, of various genders and gender identities. They threw eggs. They (laughs) threw eggs at the people who were lined up to see the show. I didn't know that. One lady was so mad with the protesters, she picked up a police barricade. You never seen it look like a bike rack? Uh-huh. This bitch picked that barricade up by herself and threw it at the crowd. I gotta tell you, it's an amazing feat of strength for a woman. <laughs> right and and there it is family you know uh and and boy these people are getting out of hand um and well see what all i look at this is and i'm gonna be quite honest on how i see this family i see this as using any tool to undermine the black agenda undermine black progress uh, undermine whatever we are addressing just right now as terms injustice, um, reparations, anti-hate crime bill against us, you know, that that would protect us just like all of these other groups. We're watching money hand over fist leave this country going into other groups. You got black folks out here praying for neo-Nazis over in Ukraine which makes absolutely no sense. And now we have a uh, open border situation to where we just have a bunch of people flooding over and everybody is coming over here trying to get a piece of what we got. And we only got one question for all of y'all. Where's your family from? Because if they are not foundational black American, I don't know what to do for you. And of course, you know, we got, we got the designation of freedmen. That's a legal designation. But we are not confused about who we are talking about or what we are talking about when we talk about the case of reparations. And if you haven't been paying attention, they're also trying to backdoor anti-Black racism with this weird trans fat conversation. So you got a bunch of trans people entering into a fat conversation and then using fat in this fat phobia talk as some basis for a conversation of anti-blackness, which makes no damn sense. So it is what uh, is happening and it's something that we must combat. And anytime somebody is telling you that fat phobia or transphobia is the same as anti-blackness, you just need to tell them this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been this Beatzilla PDX official news break. And uh, shout out to Dave Chappelle for standing firm and standing on his principles and standing for what he believes in. I respect that. Uh, I don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, I'm not promoting anything or promoting anyone, but I I will. We have to report what what it is. And I believe this man is right. 
what he said in the first place about uh, was it a little baby or a dub baby. I'm conf- I don't know the rappers, but as they were, as what he was saying, you know, that you could you could down a delete a man in a Walmart, but you'll get more flack for hurting one of the academy's uh, feelings. So when that happens, when we see that as black folks who have went through the con- consistent conditions that we have, I think it's only right that we address that in the way that it should be properly addressed. It's wrong. And at this point, no one else is going to be able to come in and put them and put their agenda on us. We, we are just putting that uh, to an end. So once again, family, thank you for tuning in. Please let us know what you think about this down in the comments below. Like and share this broadcast. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you have not. And we are, uh, uh, you know, we are trying to grow. We're growing slowly. But if you could, please sh- share this out on your social media. Share this with a friend. Share this with a family member. And uh, let them know this is where the truth rides, reigns, and abides. So this is what we're going to do. We will see you next time. Stay black, stay vigilant, stay alive. Black first, Shalom. (laughs) 